let's go back and view it in the browser. So I'll create a, a login for Anton. And Anton is one of the, the customer IDs I know exists in the database. Great, so he's logged in. So I should be able to get to the orders page. And in fact, that's all I need to do because there's some code changes. Oops, I didn't put it there. It's under secure members orders. And that shows the orders for Anton. But notice I, I'm not allowed to get to the admin section for customers. In fact, it'll redirect me back into the login page. So I'm not allowed to do that. But if I do log in back as Scott, it'll take me right back to the customer page. Great. Now let's wire up the navigation because we have enough pages here to, to set this thing up. I'm going to want some kind of breadcrumbs at the top and over on the link we'll have a real, a real menu system. So to do that, to make it easy, ASP.NET introduces this thing called a sitemap. Now a sitemap is nothing but an XML file and there are components or ASP.NET server controls that know how to, to use this information. The high level or top page for the site is our login page. So we'll call that our home. We have a couple of URLs here. Under Secure Admin, we can view the customers. And we also have our order page. And we added a couple more links here. We have Registration, Register, Okay, now by having our site defined in this XML file, it makes it very easy for us to add links to it later. But if we go to our master page, all this work of laying this out with a sitemap is really going to pay off. Because inside this menu, let's delete our placeholder text. I can drop in, under the navigation tab, we have a tree view control. I'll switch to design mode, you can see what that looks like. Now I need to associate this tree view control with a data source. And our data source is the sitemap component, and that expects the web sitemap. And right off the bat, you can see that we've got this thing populated with our the contents from the XML file. Um, this is also a good spot to put in our breadcrumb control, which we'll put right here before our login status. That's called the sitemap path. Now that one's already configured to work against the web sitemap. Let's see what this looks like in the real mode here. So I'll view the login page. Oops. Now this is looking much better. Let me log in. And you can see I can view the customers and it shows where I am on the site. If I go into order, the sitemap path works and I can go into register. All that works great. Now the only problem with this, let me go back home. If I log in as that Anton account, I still see these other links. Even though I can't get to it, it redirects me back to the main page, I can still see them here. What I'd like is for the links to only show up when I'm in the correct authentication mode. And the way to do that is back here in the web config. Now I have some text I just need to paste in right here. Now this tells my sitemap provider to trim anything that's, whoops, to trim anything from the menu that's not supported by the, the current authentication. So to see what that looks like. When I'm not logged in at all, I should only see the register page or the register option. Now if I log in as Anton, I have my orders but I don't have the view all customers. So this thing is really starting to get locked down here. That's good. Now the final thing I want to show you here is custom content that depends on each user. And the way to do that in ASP.NET 2.0 is the profile. So if I go into the web config and start adding a profile, it's essentially a collection of properties. I'm going to add a very simple property called full name. And by default, it'll just be empty. Now, what this just did is is added on or, or modified the schema of this profile object that will allow me to associate a full name string to a particular user, to any user. So inside the secure members page, in order to configure it, or add the, the name, I need to add a new page. Actually, it's I should add a web form called uh, set or set name. That's fine. 
but I'm going to choose the master page. And I only have one, so that's easy. Okay, in here it says, how about, let's use an H3 tag, tell us your full name, and a P tag. And inside here, I need two things. I need a text box, followed by a button. And let's give it some text called save. And I need an event, so when the user clicks on the save button, I need to have a little bit of code. And also when the page loads, I need a little bit of code. So when the page load, if it's not currently in the post back mode, then I only need to do this once. I want to fill in the text box text value with the profile. Now watch, when I hit profile dot, I get the full name property. And that's because it's defined in the web config. When I click the save button, I'll put the um, I'll put the text box back in the profile. Profile full name equals text box one text and redirect back to the login page. Okay, that's it for that page. Now, in order to see that page show up in the menu, though, I have to go back to my sitemap and stick it here, and I'll call it what was it? Set name. I'll call it change name. Okay, one last thing is in the login page itself I want to show that name but only when you're logged in. So instead of welcome back we'll say ASP we use the label control and it needs to run on the server and set the ID equals to label label name. Okay, and I'll need a little bit of form load code for this page. I'll need a little bit of form load code for this page, so I'll choose the page object and choose to override its load method. And here's where I have to, um, I'm going to paste the final bit of code from the clipboard so you don't have to see me type. Okay, I already have this text on the clipboard, so to save you from watching me type it in, I'll just paste it in. We set the label text to the profile full name. Let's test it for the last time. Login is Scott. Now it's my remember my profile hasn't been set yet, so let's change the name. Let's save it. And there we go. We have our profile information that's stored in the main database. So I hope I, I hope you've enjoyed this whirlwind tour of all the new features in ASP.NET 2.0 and Visual Web Developer. And there's a lot. You can see database. Uh, work is going to be very easy to do. We have a whole login and member and role system. We have site and template navigations and custom user settings with a profile. There's a lot here to digest, but hopefully this tour is giving you an idea of just what's possible when you build your next website.